Good morning, everyone. Uh, so this is attempt two at uh, this fifth section of Sigma series, etc. Um, <clears throat> attempt one just went south kind of uh, quickly on me. And uh, since my video editing skills you may have noticed are negligible, I just said, oh, I'm going to re-record the whole thing. OK, uh, so here it is. We are today looking at geometric sequences. Um, and a geometric sequence differs from an arithmetic one, and then an arithmetic one has a common difference. You add the same thing to uh, every term to get to the next term. In a geometric one, on the other hand, you multiply something. So it has a common ratio. If I compare uh, any, um, any term to its previous term, uh, they are always a certain multiple apart. So, um, like before, uh, if my first term is a 1, a sub 1, uh, then my second term is going to be a sub 1 times that ratio. And that is what a sub 2 would equal. a sub 3 could equal a sub 2 times that ratio. Or it could just equal a sub 1 times that ratio, which is a sub 2, times that ratio again or a sub 1 times that ratio squared. Uh, and of course, a sub 1 times that ratio cubed is my fourth term. Uh, keep in mind that the uh, exponent of r is always 1 less than the term number because you didn't have to multiply that first term by anything to get that r. All right, uh, looking at their example, uh, example one is the sequence 6, 12, 18, 24, a geometric sequence, and the answer right off the bat is no. Uh, to get from 6 to 12, you multiply by 2. To get from 12 to 18, you do not multiply by 2. So no, uh, that does look arithmetic. Uh, it seems like you add 6 every time. That over so I can scoot this down. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, an example two where we have one half, negative one fourth, uh, positive one eighth, and negative one sixteenth. That is uh, obviously my first term, uh, a sub one, is just one half. Uh, and that ratio, what am I multiplying by? I'm multiplying by negative one half which will make the series alternate uh, from positive to negative, positive to negative. Okay. All right, let's see what's next. Show that this sequence is geometric. Okay, so uh, my first term is when uh, n equals one. So I get four to the first over three. My second term will be four to the second. 16 over 3. My next one will be 64 over 3 and 256 over 3 um, as my fourth one. Uh, find the value of a sub 1. a sub 1 we have written down there. It is 4 thirds. And what did I multiply 4 thirds to to get to 16 thirds? Well, that common ratio is just 4. Same. Example four says uh, the first term of a geometric sequence is 10, and the third term is 10 ninths. So I've got 10, uh, I've got a space, and I've got 10 ninths. When the, we did this with the arithmetic ones, we said, okay, well, I added something to get to the space, and then I added something to the space to get here. In other words, I added two things to get from 10 to the third one. Well, here it's geometric, so I didn't add something, I multiplied. And then I multiplied again, so really I have 10 times r squared equals that 10 ninths business. Uh, dividing both sides by 10, I have r squared equals 1 ninth, and that leaves us with a little bit of an issue in the fact that r could equal plus or minus one third, and I don't really know. So what could go here? Really a plus or minus uh, 10 
thirds, then we have 10 ninths for sure, then we have plus or minus 10 20 sevenths, and we end up with definitely a positive 10 80 firsts as the uh, five terms, the first five terms in our sequence. And I don't know whether those are both pos positives or both negatives. Uh, we cannot tell. Okay, uh, recursively in a geometric sequence, you just multiply the previous term by R explicitly uh, if I were looking for the 100th term, I really would not want to multiply a bunch of things. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Some people have been saying that it's kind of small and hard to read. Um, I really would not want to be multiplying uh, one at a time. I wouldn't want to, to find the 100th term. I would not first want to know the 99th term. And to know that, know the 98th. So here what we're doing is we're just saying, hey, look, if you want to know the 100th term, uh, just take r to the 99th power and multiply it by the first term. So uh, let's see how that example works. Um, get to some more paper here. And so um, find the explicit formula for the nth term of the geometric sequence with the first term, a sub 1 equals 6 and a common ratio of two. Okay, r equals two. So that should be easy. Uh, just following that formula, a sub n equals six times two to the n minus one. So specifically, they wanted to find a sub five. That is six times two to the five minus one. That is six times two to the fourth. That is 6 times 16, and that should just be 96, I believe. Uh, let's, I'm going to pause the video while I set it up. Uh, let's see this in action uh, on a spreadsheet. One sec. Okay, uh, so I blew up this spreadsheet pretty dang big here, uh, and Let's see what happens. My first term is six. To get to my next term, I'm gonna say equals my previous term times two. And I'm just gonna copy that uh, down a few of these. And I can copy it to my fifth one and I should end up with that 96. And if I want, I could copy it as far down as I want and end up with other things. Um, there it is. Okay, uh, here we are. Focus that a little bit better. Uh, find the ninth term of the sequence, which goes 5, 3, 9 fifths, 27 20 fifths, etc. Uh, so I'm going to write it in exponential form first, or write it in explicit form, I should say. Um, A sub 1 equals 5, and that ratio. It appears to be three fifths. So uh, a sub n should equal uh, five times three fifths to the n minus one. So to find the ninth term, I'm going to uh, employ my calculator here. And I'm going to do uh, three divided by five, uh, to the power of, they wanted the ninth term, so I'm going to take it to the eighth power, nine minus one, and I'm going to multiply that by five. And I get about a 0.084-ish, approximate to six decimal places, they say. Well, there you go. Okay. In a geometric sequence, the second term is 6, and the seventh is 1,458. Find the first term and the common ratio, then give the recursive formula this time for the sequence. So I'm going to take advantage of the explicit formula uh, and say that a sub 2. 
So a sub two equals a sub one times r. Okay, and I'm gonna say that a sub seven uh, equals a sub one again, but this time times r to the sixth power. So um, they told me that this is six, six equals a sub one times r, and 1,458 equals a sub one times r to the sixth. If I take this equation and divide over here, if I put them over one another, uh, I should get that 1458 divided by six, and then on the lazy side, 1458 divided by six, which is 243, equals the a sub ones go away, r to the fifth. So I'm just gonna take the fifth root of that. Uh, so to the power of 0.2, and I'll get three. So r equals three. So my formula is really going to be, uh, well, I haven't found a sub one yet. So looking over here, real quickly, a sub one must equal two. My formula is really gonna be that a sub n equals two times three to the n minus one. That is the explicit formula. Uh, here is the recursive formula, and I will remind you again that in a recursive formula, you need to tell me what a sub one is. a sub one equals that two, and a sub n equals a sub n minus one, that previous term, times three. Okay. Not so bad, not so rough. In a geometric sequence, the first term is two and the uh, third term is three. Um, the common ratio is negative, find the second term. Okay, so uh, to get to the third term, I must have multiplied by r squared. So two r squared equals three, r squared equals three over two, and r equals plus or minus root six over two. Does that uh, look legitimate? Uh, of course, they tell me it's negative. So we now know that r equals negative root six over two. Find the second term. The second term should just be root six, it looks like. Uh, so the second term would be uh, my first term times that negative root six over two business, the twos cancel out, and a sub two equals negative root six. Hmm. Get in there, get in there. Um, last one, I believe. In a geometric sequence, the third term is four, and the fifth term is 10. Find the first term and the common ratio, give a recursive formula. Okay, I feel like we've played most of this game before. Uh, so a sub three equals a sub one uh, times r squared. Uh, a sub five equals a sub one times r to the fourth. Uh, and they tell me what these things are. 4 equals a sub 1 r squared, 10 equals a sub 1 r to the fourth. Uh, when I divide, I end up with 10 fourths, also known as 2.5 equals r squared. Um, I prefer that as 5 halves, I suppose. So r squared equals 5 over two, r equals the square root of 10 over two. I'm gonna do that the long way this time and say it's the square root of five over the square root of two. We have plus or minus in there. Uh, only one is necessary. Multiply the top and the bottom by root two. 
and I'll get root 10 over two, don't forget that plus or minus. Okay, um, find the first term. Okay, we haven't done that as of yet. Uh, so I'm gonna plug back into what I think is the easier formula. Four equals a sub one. I know that r squared is 2.5, says so right there, 2.5. And I'm gonna get four over 2.5. Same thing as eight over five equals that a sub one. So my, uh, my recursive formula on the first term and the common ratio, check, check. My recursive formula, I have to tell you what the first term is. If you don't know where you are starting from, it doesn't really help. Uh, and I'm gonna say that a sub n equals a sub n minus one times, and we never were clear on whether it was plus or minus. Uh, okay, uh, I will just go with, um, I guess, plus or minus root 10 over two. So that'll give you both possible ones. Okay, that is it. Thank you so much.